Hello and welcome everybody to the American Family Insurance Dream Bank, uh, where we believe in the transformative power of dreams. My name is Andy Frisky. I am filling in for my coworker, Madeline Martini, uh, Senior Dream Curator here at Dream Bank on behalf of the entire team. So thrilled to have you all with us here. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, we'd love to take a few moments and introduce you to Dream Bank. So here at American Family Insurance, we believe that communities are stronger and the future is brighter when people are actively pursuing their dreams. And that's why Dream Bank was created just over a decade ago. It's an inspirational community destination and digital experience that is dedicated to dreamers everywhere. Our offerings are designed to help you celebrate the dream journey, overcome obstacles, and to stay motivated. Today, we have Susie DeVille, uh, who is speaking on finding confidence in your creativity. So without further ado, I will go ahead and kick it over to Susie. Susie, take it away. Thank you so much. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Susie DeVille, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Innovation and Creativity Institute, and I help entrepreneurs and visionary leaders connect with their creativity, home in on who they truly are, and unlock their entrepreneurial potential. And I'm also the author of Buoyant, the Entrepreneur's Guide to Becoming Wildly Successful, Creative, and Free. And I wrote Buoyant for entrepreneurs and creators who are painfully stuck and riddled with self-doubt, who believe that the path to the success and freedom they crave is through more work, productivity, and discipline. And I show a much easier path by connecting to your inspired, innate creativity. So I am so excited to be with you today because this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. And I want to get started right out of the gate by getting you engaged and asking you if you have a piece of paper handy and a pen, I would like for you to write down the answer to this question. What is my big dream? So just answer, my big dream is, and it can just be a short, concise statement. Write it down. And if you're feeling bold, please put it into the chat. It would be really fun to see the variety of big dreams out there. So take just a moment. My big dream is, perhaps it is writing a book or starting a business or going on a dream vacation. What is your big dream? Susie, I think we have the, the chat disabled, but folks, you can go ahead and pop it oh. in the Q&A here. Um, oh, we okay. We'll still be able to see those comments. So go ahead and, and okay. pop your responses into the Q&A. Okay, thank you. So while you are writing that down, let me introduce you now to something that might have come up when you wrote down what your big dream is. Did you have a blurt that came to your mind right out of the gate? Something along the lines of, hmm, I don't think I have what it takes, or I'm not good enough to do that, or that's really never gonna happen for me, or that's just not possible, or oh, you're just not being realistic. Or, ooh, what if I fail or I don't do it right? Or people think I'm crazy or think, you know, who the heck does he or she think she is or he is to have that big dream? So those blurts, you are in great company if something like that came up for you. Because those blurts are just a part of our brain. <laughs> our limbic brain is just going to send out these fears regardless of whether or not they're even remotely close to what reality is. This is imposter syndrome. And I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, have heard that phrase. What the heck is imposter syndrome all about? And what actually happens as a result of having imposter syndrome? So let me take a second here and switch over to my document camera because I want to show you a diagram. <clears throat> and let's start at the bottom of the page. This is what the problem is. This little sucker down here is the root of why we stay stuck. 
imposter syndrome. I'm not enough or my work is not good enough. And when we feel this, we will cling to perfectionism. We will believe that there's only one right path or one right answer, or that everything that we do has to be absolutely perfect, or it will be deemed a failure. This, of course, keeps us locked into pessimism. And maybe we don't even believe anymore in the scope of the dream that we have. And we start to dial it back. We start to water it down, or maybe we abandon it altogether. When we are in this state, we're paralyzed by fear of judgment and self-doubt. So we might believe this lie. Oh, well, maybe I should work harder, buckle down, overachieve. I used to work routinely 70 to 80 hours a week. So I understand this phenomenon really well. <laughs> And all it does is get us into a state of burnout. And when we're burned out and paralyzed by fear, we're stuck and blocked. So how do we get out of this gerbil wheel, this mind loop of this belief system that we don't have what it takes or that we are not good enough? in some form or fashion. It, it actually begins with something that at first blush, you're going to find it hard to believe. So if you can suspend judgment for a few minutes, I promise you this is the key to everything coming together for you and to accomplishing what it is that is your heart's desires. So the very first part of this process is based in inspiration. Now I'm not talking about inspiration, like light bulb over your head inspiration. I'm talking about inspiration in the way that author Paolo Coelho talks about inspiration, which is literally inspiring, breathing in what brings you alive, what you find to be beautiful, being in nature, being with those you love, remembering what you love to do, the rapture of being alive. If we soak ourselves in those activities, it fills the tanks of our willingness to believe that things are possible for us. This is a very crucial first step. And it opens us up to a process that I'm going to take you through now, which is as fun to do as it is effective. And it is deadly to the imposter syndrome. And it will connect you with your creativity in ways that you cannot even imagine. This process is called the five M's. So take your piece of paper and take some notes because I really would love for you to try at least two of these and see how they work for you. So the first M is morning pages. This is the brainchild of author Julia Cameron, who wrote the wonderful book called The Artist Way. This is three pages of longhand writing that you do in the morning. <laughs> and ideally it's in a notebook or on a sheet of paper. And if you're absolutely clinging to the fact that you wanna type it in, that will work too. But ideally it's longhand writing because there's something about that writing process, moving your hands across the page that breaks through the barriers in our minds. And when you have the opportunity to just do a complete brain dump onto the page, you can just exercise from your brain all those jumbly thoughts that are keeping you disconnected from your intuition. 
Now, I don't want you to worry about the quality of the writing. This is not prose. This is not beautifully crafted sentences. This isn't punctuation or grammar. This is literally just fast writing. It could be, you could whine for three pages. You could rant for three pages. You could express gratitude for three pages. You could write about a bad dream. You could write about a hard conversation you had to have or one that you're anticipating having. Whatever is in your mind, the goal is to just empty it out. It's just as important as any kind of part of your morning routine. And I love to get my journal out with a cup of coffee and just empty the brain. And it just fills me with an entirely all-encompassing sense of calm and clarity. You will notice in about two, three weeks, the magic of morning pages will start to work on you like a fine grit sandpaper. And you'll notice, oh, I'm kind of, I'm responding to stressful situations differently or I seem to be able to come up with better ideas or I feel more calm and, and courageous. What's happening? <laughs> it is kind of magical how they work. If you only have a few minutes and you can't do three pages, just write for five minutes. That can get the process started for you. The key is to start to build this habit of going to this journal every day. And so you don't want to self-sabotage and try to write three pages if you don't have the time and then abandon it all together. So start where you are and do as much as you can. But this is one that I really would love for you to make a part of your morning ritual. The next M is meditation. And I don't want you to think that I'm asking you to sit for hours and do complicated meditative practices. This can be five minutes sitting in a quiet, dark room, just noticing your thoughts, not trying to resist what comes up for you, but just noticing what's, what's happening in your brain, watch your breathing, and just sort of get a good reset of your central nervous system. If you want to do a guided meditation or um, a longer practice, you can absolutely do that. But I would like for you to start out small or with a shorter period of time if it's not a habit for you yet. The next one is movement. Movement for me is a walk in fresh air um, every single day, unless the weather is just absolutely atrocious. <laughs> but even in really bad weather, I'll still tough it out sometimes. I go out with a pocket journal and a pencil because I always get my best ideas when I'm walking. As a matter of fact, I wrote the majority of the ideas in my book were written in my little journal standing in the middle of the woods. And then I'd go home and flesh them out. So you can do a walk, you can do chair exercises, you can do Pilates, you can do a bike ride, you can lift weights, whatever it is for you, get the body moving. It has such a powerful way to jumpstart our thinking and release the tension in our bodies, which takes us back home to ourselves. And again, if you don't have a lot of time, just start with a few minutes. The next one is moments of inspired learning. And this is as simple as listening to your favorite poet read a poem aloud, or it could be reading an inspirational quote or a page out of one of your favorite books. One of the things that I like to do is, is download and, and keep with me on my phone one of my favorite poets, um, David White or Mary Oliver, having them read to me or recite one of their poems right before I go on my walk. And it just sort of sets the tone for that morning stroll. 
it is a wonderful way to sort of commune to with the um, artist or the one who wrote the inspirational quote or the person who wrote the book or the poet. It's a, this is a beautiful way to connect with another's creativity. And the last one, which is the one that everyone fights me on. So I hope that you can stay open and hang in there with me because I promise this is possible for you. The last one is making something. And making something can be as simple as doing a five minute doodle on a piece of paper on a post-it note. You could set a timer and do a three minute sketch of a set of keys or a book or a vase that's just in front of you on your desk. Now, for those of you who were already shouting, I can't draw, I'm not a, I can't sketch anything. I want you to know that the this whole process is not about the thing that you make. We are so trained to believe that the only purpose of the art or artistic process is to have this beautiful thing at the end of the uh, process that others may or may not judge harshly. And that is not the point. The point of making something is what's happening inside of you, the transformation that you experience. And I can tell you, you will experience it. You could color on a piece of paper for five minutes, and I'm going to tell you, you're going to feel very differently at the end of that five minutes. You can do acrylic paints, you can do a collage, you can cut images out of a magazine that you find to be inspirational, words that you connect with, your favorite colors. You can do a mind map. Let's say you are planning this dream vacation and you want to do a brainstorm of some ideas. You can do a mind map of things you might wanna see and do or what you wanna pack. I mean, it's just the sky's the limit. If you've got crayons hanging around the house or markers, you're good. Just get your hands moving. You might even want to do um, create a new sauce for your favorite pasta. So cooking works, sewing works, crocheting works. Moving the hands is the key. When we move our hands, we are connecting to our creativity back channels. We are engaging parts of our brain that oftentimes are not engaged. We're amazing at engaging our strategic linear, logical thinking minds, but not so much our creativity back channels. Now, let me pause for a second and let's address the elephant in the room with regard to art and creativity. Many of us believe the cultural lie that play and art and creativity is for people who are retired, or children or people who have time to kill, but not for us busy folks. It's not relevant, it's not important. And besides, we're not creative, we're not artists. You are all artists. You are all creative. You have an ability inside of you that once you start to set it free, you will find it blossoms in ways that completely blow your mind. So take some time, five minutes. And if you only have time to do two of the five M's, pick morning pages and making something and just start with that. So 10 minutes, start the habit. And you're going to notice after a few weeks, that you now all of a sudden seem to have a different kind of access to your imagination and your intuition and your ideation. You're also going to notice that you seem to have a more higher tolerance for uncertainty. This is the magic for helping you make your big dreams come true. So we're going from stuck and riddled with fear and worried about being judged to setting ourselves free through inspiring ourselves and going through this five M's process. 
and what the combination of inspiration and the five M's do for us is put us into this new infrastructure, this new musculature for tolerating the unknown. Because when we set out to do our big dream work and start to take that first step, there's a big world of unknown out there and we can hold ourselves back and feel, feel like it's just too, too challenging for us. We can't see all the steps. And if we can't see all the steps, then we're never going to be successful. So I would like to encourage you to release that sort of koala bear clinging on to this notion that we must have it all mapped out and we must have it all figured out before we get started. If you have the first step figured out and you are routinely inspiring yourself and practicing at least two of the five M's, you're going to have enough momentum and you're going to be building clarity and confidence every single day. And here's the incredible news. It has this amazing power of accumulation. So every day you're making a deposit into the courage bucket, into the courage bank in your mind and in your soul and in your heart. And that accumulates just like working out your body you are working out your tolerance for the unknown. That courage and that confidence will propel you forward. And when you run into, because we all do, run into the snags or hit the briar patch or have a big fat flop, you won't catastrophize it. You won't make it mean that it means that it's not meant for you and you won't abandon the dream. You will be able to calmly and confidently just take a step back and study it, look at the feedback that you've gotten and incorporate it into a course correction and you'll keep going. This is your way to stay the course and to have a lot of fun while you're making that big dream come true. So let's take a second here. Write down on your piece of paper, what is the first step that you can identify that you need to do to get going on making your dream come true? You might need to send an email to someone, phone a colleague, ask for advice, do some research. What is the first thing? Now, don't do what our ten, our brain is going to want us to try to figure out all 25,000 steps, just find the first step. What is that? Write it down. And now that you have that written down, I want you to schedule it right now. Put it in. If you have a digital planner, put it in your digital planner, or if you're like me and like paper, <laughs> put it in your paper planner. And you may want to go ahead and pick a day this weekend. Go ahead, make it soon. Maybe tomorrow. Pick a day and a time, lock it in just like it's an appointment. It's an appointment with yourself. It's an appointment for your dream. Schedule it now. Okay, so now that we have those elements, I want to remind you that what's on that piece of paper in front of you is absolutely possible for you. We are completely capable of accomplishing what it is that is our heart's desires. We're not going to get there by working ourselves into an absolute exhausted husk of a human. 
yes, there's hard work involved. I'm, I'm talking about the overwork that we're so insanely great at. Research shows that we have to rest our brain 42% of the day. So if we do the math, we're probably in a deficit there. <laughs> Let's rest our bodies more. Let's champion the morning. Let's inspire ourselves. Let's bring play and joy and curiosity and wonder back into our lives. Let's do the things that we used to love to do, but somehow have forgotten that we used to love to do those things and just got off track when life got busy. Let's bring those things back that bring us alive into our lives. This is the way, this is the surprising counterintuitive way to make our dreams come true. And I would love to open it up. We have a few minutes for questions. So please um, put those in the, in the um, Q and A box. There's a couple and, that have come in. Um, okay. so one in particular, uh, when you were referring to, to using your hands can, or making something, can making yes. something be fixing a puzzle or diamond painting with rhinestones? And then also from the same person, coloring in a coloring book, question mark, or do I have to do it on a blank uh, paper? You can, as long as you're moving these and you're having fun, you check you're 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 good to go <laughs> coloring in a coloring book um making something in the kitchen um anything yes absolutely next question is what are the five m's again five m's are morning pages meditation movement moments of inspired learning and making something. And the two that I really would love for you to do if you if you're really crunched for time and you can only do two morning pages and making something. Start with those. Next question was asking is there a, a part 2 to this session? Um I would love for there to be. We don't have one planned. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe if, uh, what are some good ways to get in contact with you, Susie, if this person has, has more questions or would like to work with you potentially? Oh, absolutely. So, um, it, you're welcome to reach out to me via my email, which is Susie, S-U-S-I-E at innovationcompass.com. And I'd also love to, um, invite you to, um, take a look on Amazon, um, I can put this, if I put the link in the chat, will they be able to see it or no? Yep, you can, you can use the chat. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to put this, um, this buoyant, the entrepreneur's guide to becoming wildly successful, creative, and free is now the link to that is in the chat. This is not just for entrepreneurs. This is for anyone who wants to connect with their creativity and make their dreams come true. And I take you through a process. There's lots of exercises in this book. They're all very doable. And the book is a very inspirational book. So it will take you through the dark times, the scary times, the frustrating times, all the way to the finish line. Because I had a very challenging time that I refer to as my nuclear winter period when my entire life imploded. And I made a vow that if I were to figure out how to get out of the messes I was in, I would reach back and help people. And I figured it out. This is the process that I've just taken you through today in part. And the rest of the story is in the book. And you will learn all the things that I learned that really made all the difference for me. Uh, another question that came in, what if you are not sure as to where you should start? Start with the morning page or start with the five M's or start with the dream. Maybe we can have that, uh, that person clarify a little bit more just because there wasn't a name attached to it. So if you wanted to go ahead and elaborate a little bit for Susie, um, that would be super helpful. And then an another question is uh, what podcasts, audiobooks, or creative YouTube videos uh, count as moments of inspired learning? 
anything that makes you feel joyful, connected, open, expansive, filled with possibility, courageous, curious. It's all about how you respond to it. It's whatever makes you kind of go, Ooh, that's really interesting. Or wow, that's, that makes me think of this and that, and, and it gets your brain going and it lights your soul afire. That's, that's, what's important. It's not the information. It's how you feel and how you respond to that. Wonderful. Um, this question came from Laura. So I, I saw on your LinkedIn that you're in Europe, which explains the evening view behind you. Yes. How, how has that been inspiring to you? It has been delicious beyond description. <laughs> I am, I have been traveling since the 6th of March. I started in Paris. I will be in Nice until the 3rd of May. Then I'm going to London and then to Italy. And um, traveling has um, always been a love of mine. And uh, when I reconnected to it um, back in 2014, it completely changed my entire life because it is my favorite way to inspire myself. I get cultural um, inspiration. I get art inspiration. I get environment inspiration all kinds of new ideas come to me. I'm connecting dots forwards and backwards and sideways. And I love being in um, new places because I start to see the world in different ways. And that puts me in an entirely new way of thinking and being. Thanks so much for that. We have one last question as we wrap up here. Here okay. at Dream Bank, we are a community that is built up of fellow fearless dreamers. What's one piece of advice you have for someone who is actively pursuing a dream right now? I would say that the most important thing is, is to keep refilling the well. So what we, what we're great at doing is draining the tank. <laughs> and it's really important that we always refill the tank with things that inspire us, that things that with things that bring us alive and connect us back to who we truly are. Thank you so much for that, Susie. It was a pleasure getting to tune in and, and listen to you share your insights and knowledge. Thank you all uh, as well for tuning in uh, to this session today. Uh, we will go ahead and, and cap it there, and we will see you all next time. Take care. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.